Hello again, I am Blunty, sitting here in the dark for obvious reasons, well, what should be obvious reasons. I mean, surely it's in the title of the video. Surely I put at least the word light in the title of the video. Uh, this video is a, a review of my experience with the Elgato Keylight, a uh, connected uh, lighting system for content creators that they released at the start of this year. It took a while to reach Australia, and then the Australian Elgato people were going to send me a sample for review, and then that didn't happen, and then I talked to my Elgato peeps you know, the, the main Elgato pips, and he said, hey, yeah, we'll send you some out. Then something went wrong there, and the wires got crossed, and there weren't any in the warehouse because they sold out so quickly. And then I finally got some in the warehouse, and then it made its way to me through international shipping, and they finally got here about a month, two months ago, or something like that. And I've been putting into the soak-in test ever since. I didn't want to just unbox them and do a video like so many other content creators did when these things released without actually using them properly. They set them up, they lit up their face, and they went, oh, what a difference that makes. Of course it makes a difference. The lights you were using before were shit. But let, let, me, let me just... Turn on all my lights. Uh, that, by the way, was the magic of the Elgato Stream Deck, uh, one of the other Elgato products I like so much, along with the Elgato Cam Cap, which I'm using to use a real camera connected to my computer so the computer thinks it's a web camera so I can get lovely quality and soft background blur and thing. And just to, just to demonstrate that, that's, that's the webcam down in, in the bottom corner there. I mean, it's a nice webcam. It's one of the best webcams out there. It's the Logitech C922. Uh, but unless you're really, really well lit, it sucks. I mean, this, 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 oh, this is the worst case scenario. And look how bad that looks. And even when we turn the lights back on, you'll see a big difference in sort of the, 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 the texture and color of my t-shirt back there and the lights in the background sort of blow out and the, the, the gradation of the color is all crappy and it's lovely and soft and much more natural on a proper camera with a proper camera sensor and nice lens and everything than it is on the web camera. And that's part of the problem with a lot of people's demonstrations of these lights a lot of these streamers who don't know actually what they're doing they just set up the lights like it shows on the box and go oh it looks so much better than the the crappy lights i was using the 20 dollar amazon lights i was using of course it looks better they're better lights for a start they've got better color uh, uh out of them a lot of the really cheap lights you buy um they don't have uh cri a, a good cri uh, and if you, you don't need to know the acronym basically cri is just basically how much accurate light it puts out across the entire spectrum if it puts out not enough blue light and not enough green light or whatever in the mix of the white light, then it's going to make skin tones and stuff look really bad and off and make green screening w worse and all that kind of uh, stuff. And like, oh, oh, here, here's the before and, 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 and here's the after. Oh my God, the, the Elgato stream looks, they look so much better. Of course, they, they look better, you idiot. The lights you're using before were number one crap. And number two, you didn't have them set up correctly in the first place. I can just glance at your before picture and tell you exactly what you're doing wrong with your lights. They're too bright, they're too direct, they're not in the right place. You haven't got them bounced off something nice and soft to soften up the lights. You're, you're using them incorrectly. They're the wrong color temperature. You've got mixing color temperatures sometimes. There's just, just 18,000 things you're doing wrong with your lighting. And the only reason, or the main reason, your Organto lighting suddenly looks dramatically better is because they're much harder to set up wrong because there's a picture on the front of the box. <laughs> is that too harsh? I don't think it was too harsh. I'm, just, like, I'm legitimately sick of seeing those before and after things. To prove my point, I am going to now turn off the Elgato lights and replace them in identical positions with my other studio lights. You are now seeing me led by two studio quality lights, Aperture Amran light panels, which run for about, I think, $260, $280 a piece, uh, depending on which model you get. The, the model I've got behind me there is actually able to be changed in color temperature. So let me warm it up there and cool it back down again. There you go. Um, and of course our remote control. There are a few advantages of these lights over the Elgato. Number one being you can run them battery powered, uh, which is a huge advantage depending on what you're doing. Not so much an advantage if you're just doing this. And again, the Elgato lights are made for a very specific, very niche use case. And that is people just sit at the desk streaming and content creating and presenting and whatnot. And they're excellently designed for that. But they're, they are extremely limited in their flexibility. And that's where proper studio lights come in. So one, well, number one, battery powered. Number two, I can use the remote to control them or uh, they've got actual knobs on the back. So I can turn them on and off and control the power and control the color temperature in the case of that one, just using knobs on the back. Can't do that with a Gato. Again, making them useless for anything but this very one specific niche uh, product. Uh, these are brighter as well. And uh, let me just turn the key light all the way up there. The, the key light as in the position of the light, not the key light as in the brand of the key. The, the Elgato ones. I wish I hadn't used that term for it. Um, but as you can see, very, very bright, um, but a little bit softer than the Elgato key lights are again, because this light uses a panel uh, and I've got it going through a soft box at the moment. 
It's only a very, very small softbox. It doesn't take up that much more room than the Gato lights altogether, um, but it does soften the light up even uh, at, at max brightness there. But as you can see, as far as uh, skin tone and quality of light and, and the way uh, the colors work, again, you can see on the shirt here, this is why I wore the bright red shirt because uh, it, it provides a, I mean this way so you can see, provides a big difference uh, in the way different camera sensors see red. The extremely good sensor in my uh, Lumix camera back there does a much better job at color gamuts and, and representing things like the lights back there uh, a lot more truer than the crappy little tiny sensor in the Logitech web camera over there. So these, these studio lights are better in many ways. Better flexibility in that they are a panel light, so you can use them for sort of very harsh direct light if that's the sort of effect you want, or you can go for the softbox and use the soft light so you get flexibility there. Uh, they're much brighter, you get a little bit better control over them, you can use them with the battery pack and, and you know all that stuff I just talked about. But the main point I'm driving out here with this comparison is they don't actually look that much better than the Ogate key lights for this use. So let me turn them off again. We'll turn the Ogate key lights back on. Um, and I know I've got them set slightly different. I think that was a little bit dimmer than I had it with that before. But the point is, uh, as far as my skin tones and the colors and, and the way the camera behaves under the light and everything, you can, you can set them up near enough identical. So they passed that test of being absolutely good enough from, from brightness control and quality of light and color of light uh, point of view for me to be absolutely happy with them using uh, them in a, in a professional situation. Now I'm being lit by a $20 LED light panel you might find anywhere, basically. The, the, these comes in all shapes and sizes. They're all basically out of the same factory and they all basically do the same thing. This one is limited in several ways. Number one is most obviously I've got no control over the brightness at all. It's just on or off. And in fact, it does grow dimmer as the batteries drain as well, because this is AA battery powered or uh, you can buy a can plug a 12 volt little power adapter into it as well, which is what I used to do when I used to use these lights. But one of the main things you should be looking at here is what it does to my skin tones and the color of my shirt and stuff like that. You can see a lot less red uh, in my face. Everything looks sort of pale and washed out and the shadows are all harsh because the diffuser on this thing just doesn't diffuse very well at all. And you know, this is the kind of difference I'm talking about here. It's worth investing in good gear. And from what I've experienced so far, the Elgato Key Light is good gear. It is worth investing uh, in over the cheaper alternatives out there. Number one, build quality. They're built surprisingly well. I didn't expect them to be built as well as they are. I expected a plastic case with a you know cheapo sort of uh, frosted thing on the front. And uh, frankly, I should have had more faith in Elgato because I've been using Elgato products for years in their capture cards. And I love the cam link as I was talking about earlier. And the Elgato Stream Deck has been literally game changing as far as my content production goes and some a bunch of other side stuff. Um, so I should have had more faith. In the, in the build quality, but I've seen so many light panels of this size and type, you know, uh, whether they be a LED panel where you've got just a, a grid array of LED lights or what Elgato have done here and they've done what's called an edge lighting system. So the panel itself, the thing that throws the light out, that's just a, a frosted piece of material. Basically the lights are actually around the rim of the device inside. They go around the rim of the device. They do this because when you've got a grid array of LED lights, it's very, very harsh direct light from an LED. It doesn't look particularly nice. You usually have to soften it up with some sort of softbox or filter or uh, uh, umbrella system. And that adds size and weight and complexity and expense and all that sort of stuff. So the way Elgato have done it gives a very soft, uh, very easy to work with light for faces especially uh, without adding extra bulk and extra cost and extra complexity. The trade-off is uh, brightness, because if you just put LEDs around the edge of the thing pointing inwards and reflect them out, obviously that's not as many LEDs as across a whole panel. So uh, for the equivalent price, you can get a much brighter LED uh, studio light. But you don't really need that for this work. You might need that if you're making short films or something, so you're dealing with a much bigger set you're projecting light across the room and you're dealing with the inverse square law where light falls off sort of exponentially the further you get away from it, things like that. But that the whole thing with the way Elgato have designed these sites is they're designed to be used for exactly this and pretty much just this. And to that end, they also come with something I really wish they would sell separately because I could use four or five of these for various things around the studio here. Uh, this is a clamp that's specifically designed to go on the back of your desk so you can get your lights set up one, well, they suggest on their box, you know, one there and one there, but it's not the most flattering way to do if you know anything about actual three-point lighting or anything like that. That's why I've got one set up there 
and one setup here is a little rim light. And just as an example of that, let me show you what happens when I turn that rim light off. See that? I suddenly don't stand out as much from my background. So we'll turn that one back on, get a little edge light there, and suddenly I'm, I'm separated from my background a little bit more. That's the absolute basics of, of three-point lighting. A key light to light your talent. You can either have that off to the side here for a little uh, sort of, it's slightly more flattering than sort of face on, but a lot of people just put the light right in front. I mean, I've got a light in front of my face. Let me, let me, that. Suddenly my face is very, very flat and, and you know, you get, you get the little catch light in the eye and everything. And some people like that because they see makeup YouTubers do that because that's how makeup mirrors are designed, but it doesn't seem very natural to me. It's always a bit distracting. So I do a sort of a little more classical setup and I've got a little you know, key light off to the side here, just, just a little soft blue glow, just to sort of catch on the edge here uh, to contrast the sort of warmer uh, purple stuff and the blue stuff I've got in the background. They sort of complement that just a little psh, hit on there. You can barely see it. You can barely see it. You can just, just on there. But you know, I kind of like it. I'm always fiddling with my light setup anyway. But I really, really like what they've done with the clamp here. Um, fully metal and everything. Nice, hard, strong uh, rubber pads there to stop it damaging your desk. And it actually extends quite a long way. And that's one of the other things that a lot of people who are setting up these lights do wrong as well. Uh, they sort of extend them way up high and point them down at their face, which again, not the most flattering way to do things. You want it just a little bit above your eye line and point it down at you, not sort of super high. But yeah, even the little ball joint sort of quarter 20 uh, angle thingy here, even that is a step above what you usually find on these kind of pack-in accessories, like, you know, mini tripods and stuff like that. You find this on uh, quite a lot, but this is also built really tough. It's very, very firm. It locks in absolutely solidly uh, without having to over tighten it or anything like that. And yeah, it's just... I'm impressed with the overall quality. These things are built to last. So again, investment. But the main reason I like the Elgato lights is their ability to be controlled uh, over Wi-Fi via a phone app or your stream deck. I mean, you can control on and off like I've been showing you. You can also control the light power and you can preset different power situations in Elgato stream deck. So I've got that one set at sort of 7% right now. It's boosted up a bit. So it's a little bit too harsh right now. I'll take it back to you can control the color temperature, so the warmth of the lights. You can go warmer or cooler uh, on demand. Uh, there's also a system tray app you can use to control your lights. So I can bring that one all the way up. That's as bright as I go. Um, it looks a little bit brighter than it actually is because I've got my camera preset to a locked in exposure for a relatively low light level because I'm pretty light sensitive and staring in a bright light kind of hurts my eyes. So I have the lights kind of as low as they can possibly be without having to make my camera work uh, too hard and introduce noise in the image. But this is a kind of maximum brightness. We'll go both sort of really warm. We can bring both all the way down to cool light as well. Actually, let's bring those temperatures back down again. Like that. Uh, make that one a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler. Yeah, so you can do all of this in presets on your stream deck or from sliders on the control app. Uh, you can just have a button to do sort of as many different scenes as you like. But it is that kind of control that you are paying for with the Elgato lights. That's why they're a bit more expensive than sort of a roughly equivalent studio light. And with some studio lights, you do get things like remote controls, like this one I've got for my aperture light. I mean, the aperture lights are way more expensive than the Elgato lights, but you know, some, some cheaper lights do also come with a form of remote control. Some even come with uh, Wi-Fi control that you can control with your phone. None of which uh, can tie into the stream deck as well, and none of which work nearly as well and cleanly as smoothly as Elgato solution does. And again, I've had lots of experience with this kind of stuff. So whether or not Elgato's lights are quote unquote worth it to you at their price point uh, is a completely personal decision. Me? Yeah, I think they're worth it. They are a light I would have, I mean, I got sent these lights for free for the purposes of, of review and stuff like that. I'm not Elgato sponsored or anything, so I can say whatever I like about their product. Um, but I do like the Elgato light. I'm, I'm, I'm down on the side of the fence that I would feel comfortable in investing in and suggesting and recommending investing in these lights for uh, other content creators serious about what they do. Because again, I was impressed with the quality. Uh, these things are fantastic. And I was impressed with the quality of these. The control that I've had, I've had one or two hiccups where one of the lights decided it just didn't want to connect to my Wi-Fi network. Uh, so it sort of disappeared from my control deck and I couldn't turn it on remotely. The only thing I had to do to solve that was turn it off and on again. You know, step one in problem solving. But as for me, I am definitely keeping the Elgato lights as part of my setup here. They've made life really, really easy. And once more, even if you are using a, a, a webcam, it doesn't matter what camera you're using from the absolute cheapest web camera to, the, to a, a fancy camera plugged into the Elgato cam. Like every camera out there is going to perform better and look better if you light yourself properly. And properly doesn't mean 
the most bright possible, although on web cameras, because their sensitivity tends to suck, bright helps. Uh, but as you can see here, even my web camera looks pretty damn good. Uh, not as good as this. Like the flesh is, there's no detail there in the lights. And we talked about that before. It's just, there's a, there's a reason why I use my, my Linux G7 hooked up to a cam link rather than this web camera. <laughs> there's a few reasons. But every camera is going to look better if you light yourself properly. Thank you very much for watching. I am Lundy. Hopefully you found this useful and or insightful or interesting or your choice of positive adjective, hopefully. Uh, and I will catch you next time.